This particular engine is a uh, 2PM prefix truck application engine, rated 370 horsepower, 1,350 foot-pounds of torque from the factory. I bought this, uh, number one, because it was cheap, number two, because I wanted it for parts for a 7ZR prefix 3176C that I've got in a machine. So it's not gonna do me any good in one piece, it needs to be torn completely down to the bare block. Here we go. This is an air and gauge fan hub. If you watch right here, this little gap, I'm gonna shoot some air to it. You'll see that gap close up. It'll pull this front plate back against that friction material there. All right, there's most of the stuff off the front. Move around here, uh, pull this intake elbow off, then probably pull the turbo and the intake manifold and the exhaust manifold. Twist this line off. That's fine. 
I don't need it anyway. I'm gonna pull this intake manifold off here next. So I gotta get these sensors out first. That's the intake air temperature sensor. That's the boost sensor right there. We got uh, two broken off exhaust studs. Well, no, just one. That one right there. And one broken off intake manifold stud right there. So I'm gonna pull this water manifold off here next. Get the thermostat housing off. I'll come down here and I'll get the oil cooler and the elbows and uh, the water pump, oil filter base and oil filter off. Can't hardly believe that. So that comes off there just like that once you get the bolts out. It went to falling off there, so I had to catch it. That's the engine coolant temperature sensor right there. That's what that looks like. Still got oil in it, I gotta get that out. Oil filler tube. That sensor right back in there is the engine oil pressure sensor. All these sensors that I'm pointing out, these are the ones that actually go in the engine harness that are feeding back to the ECM. So they're the sensors that the ECM is actually getting its readings from. All right, that's the oil cooler. So sits in there like that. 
This is where the coolant comes in. The coolant goes out the back side. The oil comes in one of these two ports and goes out the other one. And you've got a bunch of copper tubes in there. So what you've got basically is a big open chamber all around the copper tubes. And so that's how the heat gets exchanged from the oil and goes into the coolant. There's a better look at the end of the oil cooler. So like I said, it's just a bunch of copper tubes running through there. You've got, of course, rubber all the way, you know, around them everywhere. That's what seals the coolant away from the oil on each end. The other end looks just the same, and then you can see the tubes in there. It's just a real simple heat exchanger is all it is. don't understand people's fascination with putting oil filters on with like a six foot breaker bar. I mean, what's the point of that? Some bitch still tighter than hell. Full filter base. All right, so obviously this is the oil pump. Doesn't look too bad. A little bit of scoring in there, nothing terrible. I don't know if I've mentioned this, I guess I haven't mentioned this yet. Uh, this is my first time tearing one of these C10, C12 family engines down. Been into, or completely torn down to the bare block. I don't even know how many, way up into the hundreds of 3406E, C15, C16, C18 family engines, but uh, this is my first one of these. I don't ever deal with these engines. All right, there's the front side of the oil pump. Well, that's everything off this side of the engine. All right, let's get this clutch and flywheel off here real quick.
starters only got one bolt in it. I'm pretty sure I was the guy that did that. And I'm pretty sure that this bolt's going to be really, really tight. Gosh, damn. Yes, it is. I'm going to pull this fuel filter base off here now. This sensor right here, that's the fuel temperature sensor. That's what that looks like. A couple of O-rings there to seal that to the fuel rail. And then that aluminum rail is what's distributing the, f distributing the fuel into the head and back out of the head. That all seals to the head with some mower rings again. I'm gonna go ahead and get this wiring harness out of the way next. So like I said, this is the engine harness. This would plug into the ECM, which would normally be right down in here. So this is the harness that goes to all the sensors on the engine. And there'd be another plug like this coming from the truck in here that would plug into the other port in the ECM. So the last two sensors I haven't talked about yet would be this one. That's the atmospheric pressure sensor. And then the only other one is right here. That's the speed slash timing sensor. Uh, this 2PN is just like a 5EK, 6TS, 1LW, 5DS truck engine, 3406E truck engine, uh, single timing sensor engine. So that sensor right there in a single timing sensor engine, very, very critical. You gotta have it, won't run without it. So uh, this is where the uh, harness goes into the, the rocker box. And then of course there's wires that come out, go to each unit injector. So that's what all those wires are. And then uh, there's also wires in this for the jakes too, which aren't here. I've already sold them, they're gone. Back on this timing sensor deal real quick. So in the dual timing sensor engines like uh, 2WS, 6NZ, MBN, and then on into the Acer truck engines, for example, they will have two timing sensors. So there's one on those particular prefixes that will read off the cam gear. And then there's another one that will read off of the crankshaft. There's a tone wheel on the crankshaft too. So you have dual timing sensors and those engines will run with only one of those two sensors there or, uh, you know, working correctly. But the single timing sensor engines will not. That sensor goes bad or ain't there or whatever. You ain't going nowhere. This is a 9AP machinery application, 3406E, so this is not something you'll find in a truck, but this is actually a dual timing sensor engine. It's done a little different way, though. Kind of interesting how Caterpillar does stuff like this different uh, for different applications. You won't find a setup like this on any truck engine, but uh, there's one timing sensor here. That's what that sensor right there is, and then there's also another one right here. So dual timing sensor engine, but both of them are reading off the cam gear. Whereas in a truck engine, a dual timing sensor truck engine, you'd have one up there or one in here, actually more like this one that's back here, reading off the cam. And then you'd have another one down in here reading off the crankshaft tone wheel. All right, here's the atmospheric pressure sensor. That's what that looks like. Here's what the timing sensor looks like. This is kind of the older style with the slip head. They've updated now to a little newer style that's just like a solid uh, 
It just looks like a solid piece of metal. They both work fine. These are just kind of, you got to sort of know a little bit more about what you're doing with these. These can cause a problem, as in a no start if you don't know what you're doing. The other ones, you just screw them in and they work. And uh, by the way, I'm 99% sure this is the original sensor to the engine. So this sensor is over 20 years old and it still works. That just shows you how reliable these really are. All right, wiring harness should be free now. That's pretty much all there is to the engine harness on this engine. We may be fixing to have a disaster here. Well, I got the compressor out of there. I had to uh, get the tripod out of the way. I couldn't get that done on camera, but anyway. So there's a, a ring on here, and that ring is like a, a pretty snug slip fit into this bore right here. And that's what locates the compressor. This is a little different design than what I'm used to. So to get that out of there, it's gotta be pretty much just right. You just gotta kinda wiggle on it and wiggle on it, and it'll eventually slip out of there. But that's what that looks like. Compressor drive gear, you can see the Rest of the timing gears in there. Power steering pump. Let me get all these push rods and stuff out of here first. So if you watch, there's a previous video on this engine when I bought it and got it running. If you watch that video, you know how we ended up like this as far as the top end goes. So these are all the push rods. The bigger ones are the injector push rods and the smaller ones are the uh, valve push rods. I'll just go ahead and lift all the rockers out of here too. So the middle one's the injector rocker arm. And then see this would be a, this longer one would be a, i to look around on the other side here, that would be an exhaust right here. And then that's an intake right there. These are the valve bridges. Okay, the only thing left up there is the injectors. They're not, uh, they're not bolted down or anything. The crabs are already off and uh, they're just sitting in the holes loose. So they'll lift right out. These are the old bad injectors that were gummed up with this, whatever that stuff is. front main seal.
show you how this works. So this center piece press fits into the block. This right here, this is the block. And then the aluminum housings around that. So these center pieces have a bolt that goes through the center and then they, they're kind of a press fit into the actual engine block and that's what holds the gear on. This is a stub shaft and the gear runs on that shaft. So you can see I've got it, I've got it to come out a pretty good ways, but what's happening now is the gear is actually running into the uh, tone wheel on the cam gear here. Well, there ain't really no sense in fighting that right now. That idler will come right out of there a lot easier once this cam and cam gear comes out of there. So I'm just gonna quit up there, go ahead and pick the thing up, dump the oil, drop the pan, pull the flywheel housing, pull the cylinder head, lifters out of the block, then the cam and cam gear will come out. And then I can go back to the front and work on that. Be a lot easier then. Okay, I got the oil pickup tube off of it. Here's the pan and the oil pickup tube. I'm gonna pull these two engine mounts off the flywheel housing next. And then I'll get ready to pull the flywheel housing off of it. Shit, jumped right off there. There's the rear main seal. There's the back side of it. Well, it doesn't look terrible. I mean, it was worn out, needed to be rebuilt, but nothing's destroyed. Of course, it's got some rust from sitting around, but 
I have definitely seen a whole lot worse. Might even have a cylinder head here that's not cracked in between valves. It's hard to say right now. I don't see anything that's obviously cracked. That's, that right there is just where some fuel or something is run down and it looks like cracks, but it's not. It'll have to be Magnaflux before I'm sure, but there's a chance. Let's see here, this head gasket off. Head gasket wasn't blown anywhere. At least not that I've seen yet. No, I think it was fine. All right, what's next? look good cam looks all right i mean it'll need to be checked out and polished if a guy wanted to use it but that little shiny strip that's the only spot where the roller actually runs the rest of it isn't used so it looks pretty decent for the most part all right let me uh i think i gotta pull this little plate i think that's uh, what's going to retain the cam because it still won't slide out right now We'll get this cam and cam gear out of here. Oh, I see there's a bolt coming across through here. See that little shaft coming across through there? That's that right there. That's what's retaining that cam in there. Copper washer to seal that. There you go. Yep, she's sliding right on out. There we go. It's just a gear with the shaft on each side and a bearing pressed on. It's blind in the middle. That's what drives the pumps. Power steering on the back, fuel transfer on the front. There she goes. See, that's all that is. And then this part right here gets pressed into the block when you put that bolt through there and tighten it down. Bushing in there looks halfway decent.
Got it standing up on end now. Just pulled the bolts loose in number one there. Just pull the cap off. Actually, I may want to leave that in there and use those bolts to wiggle that out of there. Didn't look too bad, really. Get this oil jet pulled out of here so I don't bend it. All right, well, you don't need to watch that happen five more times. So let me get the rest of these out of here. I'll bring it back when it's time to pull a crank out. All right, cranks out. Looks real good as expected. Thrust washer. That setup's just like a 3406E or C15 family engine there. So the liners are gonna stay in it for now. I don't have a foot made the right size to pull these out. I'll uh, take some measurements, have my machine shop make me a foot for my puller. That's going to be it for now. Here's the main bearings. Some of these were getting pretty, pretty rough. It was due for some bearings and some liners for sure, but other than that, wasn't in bad shape. Well, I drug a new piece of shit in here the other day. I'm gonna run outside and see if it'll start. I drug this piece of shit in here about, I don't know, two or three weeks ago. I've got it split in half. That rear section's gonna be leaving, it's sold. And then I'll end up keeping this front half for parts or whatever. This is a 35 ton truck. My trucks are 40 tonners, so there's some difference between them. The transmission's totally different. But uh, most of the stuff here, as far as all the cab parts and uh, the engine's the same other than the horsepower rating. So I bought this thing as is. It had pretty major hydraulic problems. As you can see, this is all done prior to me buying it. So I have no idea if the thing runs or not. But I guess we'll find out. Try to get over here and raise the hood. Oh, come on. 3406E. So let me get some batteries put on here and we'll see if she'll go and it's not warm at all 
about 20 right now and it's been uh last couple days as cold as three below zero so Need these batteries right here. All right, we got batteries. bag of CDs what a deal cabs alive see what we get here smoking That's a plus. Well, Nothing quite like a good old 3406E. They rarely let me down. This one's been sitting in a quarry for no telling how long, not being run. It came right to life, 20 degrees, no big deal. Guess that's all I got. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.